It's been a long journey, but a lot of things happened during our adventure. First of all, we had a cup of coffee that nobody wanted to drink. If nobody wanted it, it will run away. The cup of coffee ultimately set a bucket of weed killer liquid free, but it wanted to stop destroying things. It wanted to give life, and so why we had fertilizer, making all those plants grow. If only one of those plants was well placed, we will have an entire jar of inflammable oil. It wanted to fly, and it surely did. An entire lab was set in fire that day, but that's okay. Crumbling under the stress caused by inflammable oil and nitroglycerin unleashed loose in his lab, one man decided to drink technetium solution instead of his glass of water. His body didn't like it. Neither did the rat that was the receiving end of his fluids. He didn't ask for this. He didn't want to dance around gears and saw blades for the rest of his life. In the sewers, a crazy man wanted to go into space and drew his dream on paper. And eventually, that dream became true. It was a miracle. A space capsule fell from the sky. But what if it was important? All that mattered is that it was molten metal. We needed to deliver this level to whoever needed it. I don't know who, but somebody was gonna have the receiving hand of this bucket of lava. All of it. It's been a long and perilous journey. We had to encounter many evils like fire sources, bug-eating plants, the human body itself, electricity streams, and even nitrogen streams. With all of our confusing schizophrenic journey, one thing was finally certain. There was trouble in town. Welcome to Puddle! Into this update, we're gonna tackle the final chapter of the game, the nuclear power station or nuclear power plant, whichever you see suit. This is probably the shortest chapter of the entire game, but it's definitely no less interesting. The same kind of crazy variety is still at work here. So essentially, it's now time for you to repair all of the damage that you've done at the end of the last chapter. You have to put this fire out by controlling the water cannon by tilting the screen. Oh, and you have a time limit for doing this level, because if you don't put the fire out quickly enough, the tower will just collapse and your work will be all for nothing. And at the same time, you must put out all of the little bits of amber which are flying toward your truck, because it will damage the truck and if it gets hit three times, then your truck will be no longer able to fight this fire. So this chapter is pretty interesting in the sense that it's separated into two clear halves. The first half of the chapter is about getting to the power plant, and finally the second half is the power plant itself. So as much as the first level of this chapter was action-packed, this one is far more serene, but you have to be careful because you have to guide your water along the electric wire, but you must not do too sudden moves or make it go too quick because otherwise the water will fall off the wire. And those jumps certainly are intimidating, because you also need to not launch your water too high in the sky, because if it falls too hard on the wire, it will just go through and all of your water will be lost. But on normal difficulty, the mechanic behind this level is pretty generous and really allows you to slack off a whole lot. These levels are pretty easy whenever you're doing it on normal. But rest assured, on extreme difficulty, these levels will become a nightmare. In fact, while the previous chapter of the game was the hardest chapter to get gold medals on, on extreme difficulty, this chapter is just hard to beat, period, whenever you play on extreme. So level 3 has more wire shenanigans. But the main difference is, while in the other level it encouraged you to go slowly, into this one you have to go fast, but not as fast as I just did, because you will see that things will not work out well for you. On the first part of this level, you can simply just tilt your water all the way toward the front, and yeah, this thing, you have to pretty much make all of your water go by at the same time, because the shock will disrupt the flow of your liquid, and all of the liquid which is behind will just fall down. Yeah, when I told you that this level is fast-paced, you have to outrun the electric spark which is heading toward you, because contact with it is instantly lethal to your water, but at the same time, you must not bump too much into the little things that can get in the way, because otherwise things will go wrong once again. 
Also, I really love the chaotic ending to this one level. This is the fastest way of finishing the level, but if you outshoot the flower, don't worry, there's a wall behind. I hope that you enjoyed the fly team. But yeah, this little fly is all responsible for actually, well, making all of this radioactive sodium go into the place. Now, we've seen a lot of things out of this game, but I have to say this is by far the weirdest chapter of the entire game. Either in its looks or the way that the levels play. The turnstiles that you see here are controlled by how much radioactivity is into your liquid, and it won't rotate anymore because all of my radioactive mass was no longer into my liquid. As you can see, the little radioactive gauge that you see here opens the door that you see forward here if you have enough radioactivity, but since I didn't have enough, I'm gonna have to take the alternate route. Time to get the juice up, and time to die, because this jump is a bitch and a half to do, because you have to do it incredibly well. So we're gonna give it another try and try to not lose too much sodium into these things. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. This level is particular because it has two paths that you can take, and the other path will only be activated if you take the shortcut that is activated by bringing in enough radioactivity into the gauge that we saw previously into the level. Before I go and show the other route, I'm gonna fully showcase the long road that this level has to offer for you. So in order to make those turnstiles turn a whole lot faster, you either have to bring far more sodium on them, and you also need to make it so that it's far more radioactive. But once again, your time is counted because those things will drain the radioactivity out of your liquid. This is a neat mechanic, but unfortunately it's also pretty hard to get a grasp of it because... From one playthrough to the other, things are gonna wildly vary and it's kinda hard to predict how the turnstiles will react to your liquid. I mean, just changing the way your sodium lands on the turnstile will change entirely the way that things will behave. Now we're gonna restart the level in order to showcase the other path that you can take to this level. Also, the upcoming level of the chapter will also introduce the separate path mechanic. So, since we had enough radioactivity this time around, we were able to open the gate. But the main catch is, you must not let your liquid be in contact with the turnstiles too much in order to open these doors. Because you may bring all of the sodium in the world to that one part, but if all the radioactivity is gone, it won't serve you into opening the door at all. Oh, and by the way, in order to get gold medals onto these levels, you have to take the alternate path. You will never get gold if you take the long course through the level. So it seems that we're gonna have to prepare a whole lot of neutrons in order to be used... to do something! I really don't know what, but we will find out together! And this level certainly doesn't waste any kind of time in order to grab your interest. Oh, and by the way, you have to hit the switch, because otherwise all of your liquid will fall into a separate trap where it will be greeted by one of those things that just murdered my liquid. And by the way, once again, this entire level is pretty much trial and error. I mean, starting with this bit, you have to know that you're gonna have to launch your liquid forward in order to hit the switch. If you launch your liquid way too fast into the upcoming jump, you will also hit this little thing over here that pretty much will decimate all of your liquid, and even then there are high chances that you will hit this thing here by just sending your liquid way too hard on the turnstile. It's just curved to the way that it will pretty much achieve the perfect asshole effect. So once again we've got the alternate path gimmick of the chapter being in effect, only though that this time we didn't get to see what the rest of this path was all about. But what is interesting with this one level is that there are two paths in order to get to the two path branch that you will see downward, there are multiple ways in order to get to it. So all in all, this level gives you far more choice than the previous level. I mean, there were also two paths into the previous stage, but forget about taking the one that was into the other level, because it's impossible to keep any kind of liquid. As opposed to the other path where it's possible, but you're gonna be in contact with so much turnstiles that 
forget about trying to open up the alternate path by going to the long portion of the level. Also, the level is littered with all of these radioactivity fueled lifts. Your liquid has to be either close to it or sitting on it in order to activate them, and like the turnstiles, they will drain the radioactivity away from your liquid. An interesting fact, even though that we took the longest path out there, we still managed to finish the level with a silver medal. Once again, the gold medal is only here for the people who managed to go through this level the short way, but it's definitely not as easy to achieve this time around. You have to do a perfect landing onto this one turnstile, and most of the time this is what will happen. You're just gonna run out of liquid, and you will spend so much time on the turnstile that you will have to forget about it and just hit the spacebar to retry again. This is where the getting into contact of the turnstile thing comes in effect. You have to pretty much make all of your liquid fall on the turnstile all at once in order to make it spin faster. By doing this, there will be less radioactivity which will be drained out of your sodium, and this way you'll be able to take the fast path. But you must not hesitate a second, because you need to keep your liquid going at full speed in order to go through this path. All in all, this and the previous level are pretty unforgiving as far as your ability to maneuver your liquid goes. So it's come down to this, it's the final level of the game. This level decides to ditch the radioactive door as well than the turnstile gimmick that we've seen in the last two levels, but instead you can be sure that this level once again will go for something completely different. Things have now reached critical mass inside this giant core. I really love how sinister this level looks like. Inside this core, it just seems as if you're in some kind of suburban nightmare, where it's snowing radioactive particles all over you and there's a subway circling all over the place. And finally, as you're having a walk around the place, you are glowing green just like this liquid. This level can also be really confusing because this one level really doesn't work like any other level in the game because into this level, the gravity happens to work in a circular manner. Your liquid will always gravitate on whichever side of the level you're closest to. Right now, we're heading for the ceiling, and this is where we're going. And I also like how foreboding the music into this one level is, and also how come it becomes far more upbeat whenever you get close to the center of the core. And yeah, doing this jump is really, really hard. It's the last level, and we're not gonna whine about it. But we're certainly gonna cry tears of terror because holy shit, this level will make you suffer quite a bit. I mean, it's just hard just to get the basic mechanics of this level down, and you'll just be trying to do something, and all of your liquid will be split up all over the place, and even when you're trying to do the basic stuff properly, you won't do it at all. So the solution is we have to get around the problem. Remember the tip at the loading screen which said, why not go left instead of right? We're just gonna go and do that, but first, you have to go to the right at this point because we need to build off some momentum first, because we're gonna have to scale up a wall, and in order to build off the speed required for doing it, you have to go far enough, because otherwise, either you're not gonna make it or all of your liquid will end up on those uh, frying things. And once that you get this one obstacle down, this part becomes infinitely more straightforward. There are no more crazy jumps, and well, there's only one tricky part, which is this one, because usually you just don't see what you're doing, but there is a way of making it through without losing too much of your liquid to those radioactive rods or whatever they are, but it's pretty much trial and error once again. Usually, one of the worst things that can happen to you in this one level is that your liquid gets split up like that, but at this point of the level, it doesn't matter too much because at least they give you a respite and they allow you to get all of your liquid back together. Yeah, by tilting your camera hand off to the left, you can just swing your entire mass of liquid here. However, we're only about to embark into the toughest part of the entire level. We have to do a whole lot of really hard jumps all over those rods and things are certainly not gonna get any easier. You have to pretty much manage your speed really well so that you don't overshoot the ramps in order to not land into the other radioactive rods that are all around the place, 
And finally, you must not let your liquid be split up, because otherwise it will become impossible to do this upcoming section right here. Yeah, if you overshoot this jump, your liquid will all end up in this enclosed area where it's really hard to escape from. But here we are, we are close to the center of the core, we're gonna generate a whole lot of energy into this one place, or we're gonna massacre everybody who's involved with this entire nuclear plan. And there we go, we're done with the game, and we even managed to end on a good note. Oh, and the ending cinematic will be kind of troublesome if you suffer from epilepsy or think you might be prone to it, so please look away for the ending cinematic. Thank you. So remember kids, in order to prevent a nuclear crisis, you must not leave your cup of coffee lying all over the place. I was kind of expecting a better ending message from the game than that, but we'll deal with this one. So we're finally done with this chapter, but before we do so, we're gonna look at the extreme difficulty differences in all of the chapter that we just played. This one is gonna be incredibly fun because levels will get a whole lot harder now. On normal difficulty, it's almost impossible to fail this level, because you just have to put the fire out and you're pretty much done with it. But on extreme difficulty, it's not as easy, because whenever you take too much time in order to fight off the flames, they just get lit all the way back up. And finally, don't try to fight the other flames that spark back, because otherwise, you're just gonna forget about the other flames that you should've fought, and here we go, unfortunately, we can save the tower from exploding. So yeah, this level is actually difficult this time around. The electric wire levels are infinitely more difficult, because your liquid will not stick as much to the wires than it did into the normal difficulty. So you have to be even more gentle than before. Even doing jumps like this that will seem pretty much infailable, well, you're still gonna fail. So you can easily imagine all of the fun that you'll have with timing all of those jumps down to a science, because even with doing jumps like this, you still end up losing liquid, and right here we're game over. At least you gotta appreciate that this level can be taken at a leisurely pace. Because the next level, unfortunately, you won't have this kind of luxury, and into this part of section, because of the increased dexterity that you need in order to pull off some moves, you're gonna lose even more liquid. And this part here is especially troublesome, because you have to outrun this part, but... Yeah, just by doing that, you end up losing all of your liquid. I mean, I didn't even jump from this wire in the slightest. The first tool of all of the nuclear power plants up the difficulty by making it so that it requires far more radioactivity in order to open up the doors. Yeah, on normal, we managed to open this door with about... Pretty much the two-third of the liquid that we have right now, but here it wasn't enough. So we have to figure out how to bring even more radioactivity all the way there. It's pretty much the same deal on this one level, but it's even harder to pull off into this one level. Once again, on normal, this will have worked in order to be able to open the door, but we need more. What about the last level of the game now? Well, the good news for you is that, unlike every other level in the chapter, this one plays exactly the same on the extreme difficulty. But you can be sure that this level has one nasty trick up its sleeve. I think that by now you should be familiar at what will change on the extreme difficulty whenever the level doesn't change in the slightest. We've seen it happen before for the first time in Rocket in full asshole effect, and here it is again! We finish the level, and we get an asshole graph into our face. The crazy part about this is that I'm over 25 seconds over the time that I previously had on normal, which put me well above gold, and now I don't even get a silver medal anymore. Thank you, game. But I will vanquish you.
Coming up next, the gold medal run of the nuclear power plant and something else.